I was a twi hard, I am a twi hard. I will forever be a twi hard. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Lit Life with Miranda Reads. Got a little bit new things in this studio. We got some new lighting. I actually have like, if you can see my eyes, there's like that twinkle in them. Apparently the twinkle is actually due to the positioning of the light. Who would have guessed? Very excited about this change. Anyway, if you are a follower here or on Goodreads, you know that I was a twi hard. I, hold up. See this? This was bought through 21 High School. Still got it. It's been almost 15 years since these books have been published and I'm still obsessed. I am still wholly and irrevocably obsessed with these books. However, over the years, I've had some opinions silently festering in myself. A little intrusive thoughts, and I never really shared them, partly because the series has been over for over a decade, but also partly just because they weren't the most popular opinions. So today we're gonna to be covering those. So I feel like the first one has been hotly debated for years, whether or not Stephanie is a good writer. Honestly, I would say yes. I know like me explaining how I was a twi hard for like the last 30 seconds or so might make you think that I am a little bit biased on this. However, I have listened to her book at many different stages of my life. And every time I have reread these books, I enjoyed them. I enjoyed the flow of the words. I enjoyed the characters. I had a good time between these pages. And for me, that's what qualifies someone as a good writer. Do I become immersed in their world? Was I invested in the plot? And did I come away enjoying my experience? Now the second one, I already feel like it's gonna be controversial and I'm not, I wasn't even sure if I was going to put it in here, but honestly, I feel like it should have been done in the books. Edward should have been given brain damage. Okay, okay, I know how it sounds like, but like, hear me out with this one. Edward, according to canon, is 117 years old. That's literally a hundred years age difference between him and Bella. He kind of gets away with it because he looks young, he looks hot, he's 117, so it's easier for you to kind of picture him as 17 rather than 117. His mind is incredibly advanced and it's just absolutely insane how much further ahead he is in life experience, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like a lot of the times, the big argument against Edward and Bella is that if Edward did not have his youth, this book is creepy, it's disgusting, it is just loses all of its charm. However, and I've read a few books that have done this with their immortals, and I most recently actually in a mermaid book, Beneath Cruel Fathoms, absolutely stunning by the way. So it's the idea that the immortals, if you died at 25, you can keep 25 years worth of memories in your mind. And then once you get past that, like say year 26, then the year one starts to fade significantly. Year 27, year one, and year two. And you have like this shifting mind. So that way you're never older than your physical age in the sense of like your brain and your development. And honestly, I feel like that's the way Stephanie should have gone with her vampires because it really does kind of take away that creep factor. Like, yeah, Edward is 117, but really he's not much past in terms of development of an actual 17 year old. I mean, part I guess part of the appeal is that he seems older but you can kind of still have that, but still kind of limit their world. I think that would add like a really interesting dynamic, a really interesting dimension. Literally knowing going into it that you will never be able to remember your family after about 20 or so years. I strongly feel like that's a great argument for why he wouldn't want her to become a vampire. And it also kind of already fits where they say like, you know, your human life really fades but also your vampire life. All right, we got our next one, which I almost feel like people are gonna be equally as angry about. Renesmee was not that bad of a name. 
okay? There's Mary Kate, Caitlin, Anna Maria. Having compound names isn't that different. Renesme, I honestly think it kind of rolls off the tongue and not too bad. You have Renee as a name, you have an Esme, apparently you also have Nessie, which, ugh. But like, Renesme as a whole is not terrible. I'm not, I don't, I don't hate it. The next unpopular opinion is, I don't mind that Jacob imprinted on Bella's daughter. I feel like the pitchforks are being brought out, so I want you to just hold them back, get your lighters ready, but don't touch it to the torch quite yet. If this is the canon of the book, that these wolves find soulmates, and once they see their soulmate, that's it. They are done for. I think it makes sense that if you see your soulmate and you're of different ages, you still recognize your soulmate. It's not like as soon as they turn 18, you're like, holy crap, that was my soulmate? Soulmates in this book is something that's forever, it's unchanging, however, I do agree that like there is that initial ick factor of Jacob imprinting on Renesmee when she's a young child. I know that Stephanie explains it away as um, he'll be whatever she needs him to be. If he needs a friend, he's a friend. If he needs a protector, she, he's her protector. However, this is the way, part where I differ. I strongly feel that until she becomes of age, and I know she grows like twice as fast, so even like physically, she might be 18, but she's technically seven. I would want her to be 18 human years without Jacob. I do feel like as much as you explain it away, it's always gonna be a very weird dynamic between Renesmee and Jacob. And if he is there her entire childhood, I think it would be borderline grooming. I mean, again, the canon of the book is that he would never have thoughts about that or her like that, but you still have the concept of her literally being seven years old when she's physically 18. So what I think should have been done is that once the imprinting happened, they should have just sent Jacob out. They should have been like, okay, Jacob, where are her parents? I understand that you're imprinted. I understand this is gonna be painful for you but we wanna raise our child without her future lover around. And I feel like that's very reasonable on behalf of Bella and Edward. And I feel like it would really take away some of the ick factor. It also gives an extra dimension of the book where like Jacob has finally found the one. I mean, obviously not in the way that he was looking at Bella, but he's finally found who he will be meant to be with. And then he has to live with himself alone for 18 years before he's allowed back. And I think that would have like really made things interesting. You don't even have to go into like what those years are like, just literally at the end of Breaking Dawn, send him off into the sunset with the knowledge that he can come back when she's 18 and when she wants him, if she wants him, then he can join her. I know like one of the greatest criticisms that I've seen online, whether it be Goodreads, Reddit, etc., is that Bella is essentially nothing. Like she doesn't have hobbies, she doesn't have really interests. She starts off Twilight being in love, she ends Breaking Dawn being in love. She is a flat character arc. Personally, I'm fine with it. When I was reading her books, when they as they were coming out, so like that kind of gives you an idea of when these books were popular for me. I honestly felt like I had no personality. And I think that's just because whoever you are is your baseline you. So you look at other people and you say, wow, they're into this, they're into that. I'm just into the boring things I like. I liked that Bella wasn't this badass heroine she didn't go off on adventures and a perfect guy saw her as she was and then fell in love with her. Really not having to do anything, just being yourself and then the guy kind of falls into place. And I think that's part of the reason why this one has had so much staying power because it is very unique where there isn't a situation like where they are like thrown together as partners, they fall in love two minutes later. 
This is just high school life with vampires in it. So you might be wondering, where is this video coming from? It's a little bit different from your usual stuff, Miranda. That's because after years and years of waiting, Stephanie Meyer has announced Midnight Sun is coming out. Midnight Sun is Twilight, but from Edward's perspective. For the people who might not be aware, Stephanie Meyer started writing this way before she wrote that, whew, that gender reversal Twilight. Honestly, just skip that one. But she's written this Midnight Sun one years and years ago. She was going to publish it. Somebody leaked it online and it's just kind of been going back and forth with whether or not she's going to publish it. She eventually put her partial draft online and hasn't touched it since. Except this August, this August, it's coming out. It's coming out. I am so excited. You have no idea. I've been waiting for this book for years. I remember reading the partial draft of Midnight Sun and then telling my mom that she has to read it too. And the two of us were geeking out about it. So I'm just, I can't wait. I'll have the link down below if you guys want to see it too, but it's actually happening. And that cover for it, gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm just, ah! I can't wait. I'm just literally, I cannot, I can't wait. I'm so happy with this. All right, so those are my unpopular Twilight opinions. I hope you still like me as a human being. I'm really curious what your Twilight opinions are. I cannot wait to check in with you on August when Midnight Sun comes out. I'm so excited. I'll put the link down below. It's gonna be amazing. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading. Bye.